Hello everyone, welcome to the United Stand. Samir says, what time is it in England? It's 21 minutes past 11 at night. It's nearly midnight and we finally got it. Lissandro Martinez, Manchester United, deal done. Put a smile on your face at long bloody last. We've been waiting all day for this. I was just putting my pyjamas on. I, was, I said on Twitter, I'm going to bed in my, in my Frankie Goes to Manchester t-shirt because I remain confident that we will do that deal despite all the negativity. But you better pump it up. Pump it, pump it up a bit of positivity because Lissandro Martinez is a done deal. We don't need to wait on Ornstein. We don't need to wait on Romano. I'll tell you what, on this one, I'm willing to give it to Laurie Whitwell because to be fair, I tweeted this out a few hours ago and said, everybody's telling me that this deal's done. The fee is 46 million quid. The contract is five years. The wages are sorted. I couldn't understand why this wasn't coming out and... Fair play to Laurie Whitwell, he's put it out. Because, to be honest with you, he's put the fire of frustration out by just putting it out there. Now remember, Laurie Whitwell's waking up in Melbourne. Like, it's about 8 o'clock in Melbourne. So he's woke up this morning, he's got on his phone, he spoke to his contacts, and he's been told the deal's done. Romano and Ornstein, I think they're in the UK and Europe, they're going to bed. So you've got to get up early to catch Whitwell out on this one. He's got it in, back of the net, well done to him, deal done. And I tell you what, He's not wrong. I know he's right because I tweeted it a few hours ago. Deal is done. Fee had been done. Contract's been done. Wages has been done. This is really just technical bullshit we don't need to know. We're not waiting for official announcement. We're not waiting for medical and quotes. We're fans. Put about, put, put, well done, Laurie Whitwell, for putting us out of our misery. Just tell us the deal's done. I don't need to know whether the ink's dry or whether you faxed it off to the bloody home office or wherever it's got to go. Have we agreed a fee with Ajax? Yes. Have we agreed the wages? Yes. Have we agreed the contract? Yes. Is he coming to Manchester United? Yes. Get a bloody ding, deal. Ding, dang, do. Get it ding, dang, done. Yes. Get it in at last. That's what she said. And he said, get it in. Come on, let's get on with it. Manchester United, Lissandra Martinez, 24 years of age. Ajax player of the year. I think he was Era Divise player of the year. Left footed centre back, plays a high line. Little beast of a centre back. Very good in the air. I'm just, I'm just very, I'm, you know, nothing against sit down Arsenal. Yeah, I mean, I'm, whatever about that. I, I don't even want to be in competition with Arsenal. I find it embarrassing when in competition with Arsenal and Spurs, with all due respect to them. You're better than us. You finished above us. I want to be in competition with Man City. And with all due respect to Malasia, that was a, this is a much better. Look, I think Malasia can be a good signing. In no way am I saying it's a bad signing, but I also think Malasia could have signed for Fulham. You know, you know, I hope he's going to be a good signing. I'm putting a lot of faith in Ten Hag on that. But with Lissandro Martinez, we're spending 46 million quid on a, on a centre back here. 46 million pounds is a lot of money. 46 million pounds is a lot of money. So we, sh we and 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 everything suggests that this is going to be a good signing. So everyone is talking about Lissandra at centre back or left back. But what about? Oh my God, Matt, where, do you watch the United Stand, Matt? Can I just ask that question for a start? Because I have to answer this question at least three times a show at the moment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna get a recording and I'm gonna press it and I'm gonna sit here and just listen to myself say it because I'm tired. I mean. Look, he's basically saying that Lissandro Martinez can play as a centre midfielder and break up the prey and, 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 and break press with dri dribbling. But we're buying him as a centre-back. Welcome to Members Club, Joe. We're buying him as a centre-back. He may well end up being a forward, but we're buying him as a centre-back. i tell you what is exciting about this deal as well is that it's just a weird deal. Um, not, not in the sense that I'm very excited about it. And look, I'm actually going to break... It doesn't really matter because if you're a member, you've seen the video already. So I'm going to tell you some stuff that's going to really excite you, which is what I've been looking forward to. Is there a reason why Fabrizio still hasn't said, here we go? He said it's almost done, but at this rate, you might as well say it's confirmed, says Arjun. And it's not the paying his wages thing is true with most like is true. I wasn't getting paid at work. I would leave likely he wants to stay. I don't know, says Nathan Allen. Don't know what he's talking about. I don't know whether he's just rambling about his job at work or he might be talking about Frankie de Jong. But let me just blitz through this because some of you who are not members of the United Stand members channel you might not have seen this video which is on our members section where we compare Lissandro Martinez to Maguire and Varane so if you're worried about his aerial duels last season he was averaging 4.6 aerial duels per game winning 63% of them Maguire was averaging 4.1 winning 65% of them so his aerial ability is actually very good um also also We've got um, 
his defensive duels, he averages 6.8 per 90. Maguire averages 4.6. And he wins 71% of them. And Maguire wins 71% of them. So he's involved in more offensive duels as well. But this is the one that really gets you excited. Passes per 90, he averages 79. Maguire averages 53. Varane averages 49. His pass percentage is nine, success rate is 92%. He is passing the ball... 25 times 26 times more per game than harry Maguire. it's absolutely fantastic um and not only that forward passing 28 to Maguire's 18 this is and i know it's eredivisie but his champions league stats are pretty much the same as well in lissandro martinez we're getting a left-footed center back which we don't have bay Maguire, jones Varane, lindelof they're all right-footed we're getting a left-footed center back who can play the way that Eric Ten Hag wants to play. High line, covering the flanks, bring the ball out from the back, pass the ball out from the back, aggressive, good in the air. He's got the whole lot. And the only question I have about Lissandro Martinez is why didn't we go for him over Timber? I really wanted Timber, and I think Timber's going to be a very good centre-back, and I hope United go back in for him. But Lissandro Martinez is 24 and basically about to step into his prime years as a very good centre-back. Timber, I think, is 20. It shows you how highly um, Eric Ten Hag holds Timber's ability. But I actually do think that Lissandra Martinez probably suits us better for now than Timber does. And I really wanted Timber, and it's his loss. But I do think Lissandra Martinez ticks more boxes than Timber. He's, of the right, he's, he's older, he's got a left foot, and he's more of a leader. And he is more of a leader. Even Timber himself put that quote out, didn't he? I don't know when it was from, a few months ago maybe. Talking about his leadership qualities. This guy barks orders. Is he isn't going to take the toxic crap with a great help. Eric Ten Hag now bringing De Jong and Leo J. Thank you very much. Guy's phenomenal for his height. Martinez pocketed Haaland and the six-foot striker couldn't get past the Argentine once. Roll on Derby Day, says Stedge. Uh, boss, sorry to interrupt you, but this is now a good transfer window if we get Frank. Is this now a good transfer window if we get Frank and keep Ronaldo? Because Martinez looks really good. Um, I'll come back to that, St. Jimmy. I think we probably have done better getting him over Timber. I I'm starting to think that as well, Sean. I mean, look, I, I trust Eric Ten Hag's judgment, and he definitely wanted Timber over Martinez. But normally when you miss out on your first choice, you're like, oh, we didn't get our first choice. I really want to drill down onto that. Dion going to join Real at this point, says XI. Is he? I don't know why people judge him by his height. Cannavaro is five foot nine um, as well, says that boy. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, yeah, I, I do want to drill down on that because I think normally, um, welcome to the Embers Club, Brody. Literally just watching clip of his passing when I got the notification. What a player. Ten Hag bringing the vibes. Love your passion. Mark, let's go, says Alex. And uh, Nathan, I think we've spoken about that. He's on about De Jong wanting to stay at Barca and him apparently not getting paid his wages. I don't get why he would want to stay at the club. We'll talk about De Jong in a little bit because this is a deal done deal. Uh, this is a deal done for um, Lissandro Martinez. KDC, thank you very much for joining the Members Club. Buzzing with this. Hopefully we can get De Jong over the line, says Liam Gray. We'll talk about De Jong in a little bit because I just want to talk about Martinez. Please smash a like on the video. We love to get at least 5,000 likes when it's a new signing. But... Yeah, I just want to drill down onto that because we did want Timber. We did want Timber and we've ended up with Lissandro Martinez. And if you think about it, if we don't get De Jong and we had to go and get Neves, we'll be like, oh, we missed out. And there's been loads of examples of that. But I think this is a really unique one because actually, as much as it's disappointing not to get Timber, there is really a strong case to say that this is more suitable now and he's probably a better player for us now. So I think that, is very clever from Eric Ten Hag because, um, yeah, we, it is disappointing when you, you don't get your first choice. But I, I don't, I actually, the left footed thing is really important as well. Fabrizio said he's waiting on a final call before here we go. Must have different sources to the others, says Joshua Bowater. Look, I can only, I can look. First of all, if you're panicking and you need Fabrizio and David Ornstein, that's absolutely fine. You know, I was probably waiting for that. I would have gone live at half seven, to be honest. Check my tweet at half seven. I said, I don't know why the big hitters aren't saying it's a done deal. Because I was told, five-year contract, £46 million, it's done. And then no, it wasn't, nobody would go live. No, nobody would put it out there of credibility. And I'm not going to say it because people will go, he don't know nothing. The only sources he's got is his tomato ketchup. But look, I was told about Sterling a month before everyone else. I knew Ronaldo was injured before everyone else. I do get told bits. And I was told this was done. But I wasn't going to do that because I think it's unfair for people who 
you know, just want it a little bit more confirmed. But Laurie Whitwell works for The Athletic. Like, The Athletic, whatever you think about it, he works for The Athletic. And as he says, everything has been agreed with Man United, Ajax and Lissandro Martinez. Um, there is hope he can join United's pre-season tour. Um, so, you know, that that's where we are with it. Um, and um, actually, I think actually... There's, there's more than that. Manchester United, and there's another, there's more, there's more. Manchester United have agreed a fee with Ajax for the transfer of Lissandro Martinez. Personal terms have also been agreed, and Manchester United are hoping he can join him on the tour. That's uh, the same thing I've just said, isn't it, from uh, Laurie Whitwell? So, you know. Um, oh, Jonathan Schrager says, here we go, equals deal done, everything agreed, but contract not signed yet. The situation is reportedly still the same. Um, Christian Eriksen at this moment is not signed yet, says Jonathan Schrager. Look, I I couldn't give a shit about all that. You know, we are football fans and I couldn't give a shit about whether the ink is dry or, you know, the technicalities of things. I think people are losing sight here. I'm not here as a football fan of Manchester United and you're not here as United fans at this time of night to be told we can't get excited about Lissandra Martinez because somebody's not ticked this or done that. I don't, I don't know when this has happened. And to be fair to Fabrizio, remember he did say deal done, Malasia to Leon, so maybe he's just been a little bit extra careful now because things can change very late on but reality is deal done is not official announcement there is a little bit of leeway there and you know Jed Spence tonight David Ornstein is I would go live on that if I was a Spurs fan it's deal done there's deal done which is for fans to get told that a deal's going to happen by journalists and then there's official announcement by the club where Lissandro Martinez is holding up the shirt with a few quotes and that's a different thing. This is deal done. This is, we are signing Lissandro Martinez from Ajax. We've agreed a fee. He's agreed his wages and he's going to sign. That's where we're at. And that's all we want. Because what we've been waiting for for the last 48 hours, and to be fair, the last four weeks, is United to start kickstarting this transfer window. And I think what we're doing with Lissandro Martinez is kicking this transfer window. He was told not to train this morning because they don't want him to get injured. And United have finalised that deal today. Get him on a plane tomorrow, get him to Manchester, reveal him on Saturday, get him on another plane on Sunday and get him out to Australia. That's what I'm excited about here. I really couldn't give a toss if somebody doesn't dare say deal done or here we go or whatever because they're worried about you know the ink drying on a bit of a contract. The reality is Lissandra Martinez is a Manchester United player when he holds that shirt up and it's official. Everybody knows that. There's always that little bit of a grey area before but deal done has always been, we've been doing it for years on this channel and not one of them hasn't got through to official announcement. So maybe it'll happen one day, but it's not going to happen on this one. And look, they can always fail the medical. You know, how many deal dones have we done for Jaden Sancho and Cristiano Ronaldo and Lissandro Martinez? And they've still got the medical to do. So look, it's, it's all about what you want to enjoy. We've been doing this for years and I've always said it and we've always done it this way. You get terms agreed with the player, you get deal done when you agree it with the club, and then you get the official announcement. We've done the terms with the player. We are now at deal done because we've agreed a deal with Ajax, and then we just get to official announcement. It's the three stages of a transfer. If you don't want to enjoy that, don't enjoy it. But I tell you what, I am going to enjoy it because Lissandro Martinez has agreed a deal with Manchester United and we've agreed a deal, we've agreed a deal with Ajax. And that's where we're at. Uh, Fabrizio said he's... Yeah, we've done that one. Welcome to the members club, Alex. Uh, buzzing, Maguire isn't good enough to start for United. How is he our captain? Simply put, Oli, that mistake cannot continue to hold us back, says Callum. Great signing. It's an upgrade at the position as well as multifunctional player. Great to have these players in your squad, says Andrew. Brody says, Mark, you used to be in finance. Have you ever checked the SE... See financial filings for Manchester United. Very concerning stuff. Might be interesting video for member channel. Love the channel, says Brody. Thank you very much, Brody. Welcome to Members Club. Callum, we've had five, five memberships gifted by Jack. Thank you, Jack. You're a legend. I'm going to gift some in a minute because it is a new signing. Um, but can I just say as well, in relation to Lissandro Martinez, we ain't buying him to sit on the bench. Maybe Malice is sitting on the bench. 15 million signing, young, he's got to adjust himself. Maybe that's going to happen. But um, I don't think that is going to happen with Lissandro Martinez. We are buying a player in Lissandro Martinez for 46 million quid. He's going to be our only left-footed centre-back. He's going straight into that team at left-sided centre-back. Or, or, or I'll be stunned. I'll be stunned. I know people think Maguire is going to play. And I think Maguire is going to play. But I think Maguire is going to play right-sided centre-back. And I think he's in competition with Varane. We, are, we haven't got a left-footed centre-back. If you look at this team here, 
If you look at that team there, where Harry Maguire is number five, next to Varane, number 19, Harry Maguire's got a right foot. Eric bay has got a right foot. Victor Lindelof's got a right foot. They've got left foots as well, but they don't know how to use them. Lissandro Martinez knows how to use his left foot. And it provides balance to the force. That's Star Wars. But it provides balance to the back four. The back four balance is so important in a Ten Hag side. He will never play Brandon Williams ahead of Malasia and Luke Shaw at left back because he wants balance. He doesn't mind his winger, Jaden Sancho or Marcus Rashford on the left wing, being inverted right footers. But he wants his full backs to be able to overlap and put a cross in. And... It's very important that the left centre-back is left-footed as well. Lissandro Martinez is going straight into that team. You cannot spend £46 million on a player and not start them and stick them, sit them on the bench. Matt, you know, to be honest, if you're John Murta and, and, and Eric Ten Hag says, I want to buy a, I want to buy a backup centre-back, who do you want? I want Lissandro Martinez. For £46 million, yes, on your bike. This is a player for the first team. This is a leader. This is a player that comes into that team and organises the team on the left-hand side. Who plays next to him at right-sided centre-back? Well, I think it should be Varane. Maybe it, maybe Varane won't be fit enough. I think that's something to watch out. So I think it will be Maguire a lot as well. But ultimately, these are nice problems to have. And, you know, maybe maybe Ten Hag's going to do something really strange and go, look, I've always played a back four at Ajax in the Eredivisie, but this is the Premier League. I quite like what Tuchel does, what Conte does. I'm going to play with a back three. You know, maybe he's going to do that. I don't know. Great to be back here again, Mark, with some great news of Lissandro, says Richard. Hope Maguire is going to enjoy some bench time to learn to play better football. I, I don't think that will happen, Richard. But, you know, I would rather have Lissandro Martinez, Maguire and Varane fighting for two spots than Varane and Maguire fighting with Lindelof because you know what he's going to go with there. Ryan Johnson, thank you. Welcome to the Members Club. Do you think four players, four players is all we're going to bring in, Mark? I want to talk about that, Killer. Someone has asked about that. I'm going to say it out loud. Ten Hag does not play with a centre-back. Ajax's entire back line has been or will be class, world-class midfielders, says Josh. Um, just got here. Finally, welcome the next Cannavaro, says Great Times. And Richard Briscoe, thank you very much. He does have those... Um, i tell you what, this is, a, this is a first on the live chat. The cat's in. I can hear him in the next room when I let him out. I'm still here, but we've been, been interrupted by a cat. You're really not very popular, you know. Where are they? If you know, you know. I've had Doritos nicked. I've been in the shower for a false, here we go. And now I've got a bloody cat interrupting. He wants to go out, it's nice and warm. So, um, great to hear back here again. Okay, I read that one, read that one as well. Uh, do you think four players is all we're gonna bring in, Mark? Says Killer Ghost, we'll talk about that in a minute. The Labyrinth, welcome to the members club. Goat status, says Jack. So, yeah. Lissandro Martinez, as you can see below, Laurie Whitwell's come out with this. He's obviously woken up in Melbourne, Australia put a couple of calls in, messaged a couple of people, this deal is done, done, done. It's done. And um, I'm just really pleased that somebody's actually come out and put it out there because, as I said, we were talking about this on the 7 o'clock show. I tweeted it at half seven. I can't remember what I said specifically. I might even have the tweet. Um, here we go. Got it. It was at 6.51. 6.51 I tweeted this. So four hours ago. 46 million fee for Lissandro Martinez, five-year deal. I'm amazed none of the big hitters have announced it. And I was told that at half six tonight. So fair play to Laurie Whitwell for actually putting it out there because I just don't get why, why people were sitting on this. Um, as I say, we as fans are not here for the crossing of the, uh, the T's and the dotting of the I's. Done deal is never official. Done deal is we know we've, a fee to, we've agreed a fee with Ajax and we know that the player's coming. Official announcements when they're holding up the shirt with a few quotes. We know the difference between the two. We want done deal because we want to feel that excitement. And of course, there's a medical to be done. Who knows what could happen in a medical? I'm sure it'll be fine. But I do like the Cannavaro. I love the Cannavaro um, comparison because I think everyone, everyone wants to liken a player to something. And I think the Marcus Rojo thing is just lazy. Oh, an Argentinian left-footed centre-back, and we're buying another one. I, I just don't think there's any comparison between Marcus Rojo 
and Lissandra Martinez. They're very different types of players. Marcus Rojo was rough and ready, and I think Martinez is quite aggressive as well. But Martinez is way better on the ball. He's got way better passing ability. Um, Mobility-wise, I'd say he's probably a bit quicker as well. But they're not comparable. What, who is comparable to Alessandro Martinez is more of a Poyal or a Cannavaro. These centre-backs that aren't massively tall but can read the game and play the game ridiculously well and are aggressive. So I loved Cannavaro. Cannavaro was one of my favourite centre-backs. So if, we could, if we've got a player that's anything like that, I'd be very excited. I really don't think the captaincy is a done deal yet. I think Eric Ten Hag really didn't have a choice on the tour but to keep Maguire. But the squad isn't, isn't final yet. Maguire is not safe, says Andrew Rossi. Well, I'd hope in relation to Maguire, there's competition for places at the very minimum. I think everybody wants to have a pop at Maguire because they don't want him as captain. But, you know, if he gets to play as well as he can, he's still a decent player. But the captaincy thing shouldn't be always going to play regularly. Like, we're Manchester United. I don't think Pep Guardiola's captain or Liverpool's captain necessarily get plays every week because they're captain. They get, they probably, I mean, they play because they're arguably one of their better players. There has to be competition for places at Manchester United. You can't just start because you're captain. So whether Maguire's the club captain or not doesn't mean he has to start every game. You could easily drop Maguire and put Bruno as captain, couldn't you? Here's a couple of pints on me, Mark, for staying up a couple of hours later. Do you think that we will now shift our focus to other signings now that Lissandro is done, says Elliot? I do want to talk about that. A few people are asking about that. Hi, boss. I'm going to Canada next month for two years from Ireland. Can't wait. We're going to keep up with my favourite channel. Thanks, buddy, says St. Jimmy. I hope you enjoy Canada. I think it's a lovely country from what I've heard. And Mark, do you think that Man United are waiting for the De Jong deal to announce all three signings at once to show people intent? I will talk to you about De Jong in a minute, Elliot. Um, Shane, welcome to the Members Club. Are you worried about Maguire, Mark? He's a massive problem, says In. No, I, I'm not worried about Maguire and I don't want this video to turn into an anti-Maguire thing. I've never had a problem with Harry Maguire or Victor Lindelof or Phil Jones. Personally, not a problem at all. This is about ability. Do I have problems with them as Man United centre-backs? Yes, because I've seen Pallister and Bruce, I've seen Vidic and Ferdinand, I've seen Stam and Janssen. I've seen, I've seen the standard of what a Man United centre-back should be and I don't know that Lindelof and Maguire are that standard. Varane is, his CV suggests it, and also I've seen how good he is. We need competition for places. I wouldn't have sold Maguire this summer. I think he actually justifies being kept for another year. It's his opportunity to see if he's good enough. And I'll tell you what, if Harry Maguire plays 40 games this year, then he will have kept either Varane or Lissandro Martinez out of the team. And if he's done that, I hope he's played well, because he'll have to play well. Kim Ari, thank you very much. Welcome to the Members Club. If Ronaldo were to leave, who's your first choice to replace him? Says United. I'm going to talk about this in a minute. At this point, I'm more excited about Lissandro other than Frank. I mean, look, Mason, I agree with you. The most exciting signing for me would be Anthony because I like wingers. We need a left-footed winger. He'd be the most exciting signing. De Jong would be our best signing because he's the best talent, but there's just something that's not massively exciting about De Jong. The length of the deal, all the issues with it, but he is a world-class player. But I get, again, I do agree. I think Lissandro Martinez, his style of football, a left-footed centre-back, suits the Ten Hag system. He, there is something very exciting about this signing. I really hope it works. United, welcome to the Members Club. One problem solved. Welcome, Lissandro. Now go and solve the midfield. The Ronaldo, the striker, and the right-sided forward problems. As Travis. Hi, Mark. Shout out to my mate, Sean, who got too giddy with the idea that Ronaldo would be joining Chelsea. What a pat, what a prat, says Roche. That is true. Klopp, some, Klopp sometimes benches Henderson and plays Cater and Thiago because Van Dijk is a captain. Uh, what you said there is true, says Nathan. Thank you very much. I really hope Martinez gets a run in the team with Varane. They could really make a good partnership with a good midfield in front of him, says Barry. And of course, of course, Barry and everybody else watching, the big positive with this as well is that Lissandro Martinez will be on the tour. We will, well, actually, I'm an idiot. I shouldn't have said that. The plan is for him to be on the tour. The plan is for him to have the medical tomorrow or Saturday and be on the tour by Monday. Get on the plane, get on the tour. If he's on the tour, obviously he won't play against Palace. He might play against Villa next Saturday. But whether he plays against Villa next Saturday or not, he'll have a week training with the team. He's been training with Ajax. He's going to get two or three weeks training with the team before we play our opening game of the season. So he should be starting in the opening game of the season. If you don't buy a player and they miss the tour, there's a chance they might not be ready for the start of the season. So this is another positive as well. It is sad that no big club wanted the so-called best. I hope United fans see that he's massively declined, says Tom T. 
uh, Cock, welcome to the Members Club. And uh, I think we should... <laughs> I think I, saw, I shortened the name there. I think we should say deal done when he is at least travelling to Manchester. To me, this is still a prediction, says Mohammed. God, I bet you're fun at parties, Mohammed. Bloody hell. Talk about a way to try and deflate the mood. Mate, we've been doing this for seven years. I think we know what deal done is and I think we know what an official deal is. Some of you lot are miserable and don't like to celebrate it till they're holding up the shirt. We've been doing deal done for years. Deal done is when credible journalists say that the deal is done. And we've had that. Um, I like this signing, but would also take Alvarez from Ajax, who is a CDM. So Simon Cliff. Hi, Mark. Varane is also left-footed. So would we, we start Varane and Martinez, or would Varane be benched? Says Ryan. I'm sure. I'm sure Varane's not left-footed. I'm cautiously hopeful. Is it, is it possible that he's, uh, the training was that bad in such a big club? Says Jonathan. Good evening, Mark. Seeing outlets linking Anthony to Liverpool and Chelsea, is there any merit in that? I want to take them with a pinch of salt. Says Shubby. And Ryan, welcome to the Members Club. Well, look. A lot of people are asking about this. Please smash a like on the video. Lissandro Martinez, deal done. But a lot of people have been asking, do you think that this is the end of our transfer window in relation to signing players if we get De Jong, Eriksen, Lissandro Martinez, Malasia, four signings? Do you think that's the end of the transfer window? Well, it's a very good question because if you add up 46 million and you add the 60 that we're paying for um, De Jong and the 15 that we're paying for Malasia... Guess what that adds up to? £120 million. Effectively, I think that probably is our budget. I think that budget's a joke, an absolute joke for a rebuild that we need. That budget should be 175 We really should be buying two more players after that, Tillemans for 30 or Lehmer for 20 and then Anthony. So we should be spending more. This is where it's going to get interesting because if they close the transfer window on purchases after Lissandra Martinez and De Jong, I'm sorry, a left back, a free transfer, a midfielder and a centre back is not enough. So we do need to sign more players after this. I just don't know whether it will. How would I rank this transfer window if we bought Martinez, Malasia, Ericsson and De Jong? Six. And that's nothing against the players that we bought, but last year when we bought Sancho, Varane and Ronaldo, I gave it a seven. And people were like, oh, you can't do that. Sancho's world class. Varane's world class. Ronaldo's the GOAT. And I said, yeah, but I'm not judging the players. I'm judging the window. We didn't buy a midfielder. This season, this summer transfer window, we needed to buy two midfielders, two full-backs, a centre-back, an attacker. Didn't really need a centre-attacking midfielder like Ericsson, but he's a free transfer, so it doesn't matter. If we just get a centre-back, a midfielder, a free transfer and a left-back, we haven't got a right back, we haven't got the other midfielder and we haven't got the forwards. So we're three short. Um, so there we go. Um, there is a debate going on in the chat here about Raphael Varane that I'm going to have to solve. I mean, look, he's probably two-footed, but I always felt that his predominant foot was right. Um, apparently he's left-footed. There you go. He is left-footed. He's very good with his right. No, he's right-footed on transfer market. I tell you what, look, the reality is he can use both feet. I don't know what his predominant foot is. Maybe he's that word that I can't shout. As it, I'm, I'm, I'm ambidextrous or something like that. The point is, it's irrelevant whether he's left-footed or right-footed because he's going to be playing right-sided centre-back. We're not going to put Lissandro Martinez on the right and put Varane on the left. So, yeah, Varane will play on the right. Maguire will play on the right. And Lissandro Martinez will play on the left unless he gets injured and then we might put Maguire back there. So, uh, yeah, that's that's that solved effectively. Um, Nathan says, I just searched it. Varane is left-footed. You can quickly search it on your phone. Varane is left-footed. I just searched it and it's right-footed. I think he's right-footed, but you can probably use both. Mark, bigs up, big ups to the Jamaican people in the chat, says Jordan. Well, let's not be exclusively Jamaican. You know, there might be people watching elsewhere, but at the end of the day, it's 10 to midnight and we're live talking about deal done for Lissandro Martinez. Let me just bring you some uh, other stuff. So everything is now agreed for Lissandro Martinez to Manchester United. Fee has been sorted. Personal terms agreed. Manchester United hope he can draw the tour. That was from Laurie Whitwell and it was about half an hour ago. Um, and of course, it's a nice thing to have happened because we've got the watch along tomorrow morning. So I, um, 
I didn't want to be waking up in the morning thinking, oh, when's the signing going to happen? When's the signing going to happen? Of course, some of you are going to have to, all I'm going to say is some of you are going to have to pretend you're really excited tomorrow when deal done happens from certain other journalists. But we're Man United fans. We don't wait. And the reality is that uh, Laurie Whitwell is very close to the club. He's an athletic journalist. Um, if he says what he said or James Ducker or Samuel Luckhurst or Simon Stone, I'd have gone live off them anyway. So there's a select few journalists that I will take their word for. And um, as I say, at 10 to 6, 10 to 7 tonight, I put a tweet out saying, I don't know why people aren't putting this out as deal done because the fee is this, the contract is five years. Why has it not been put out there? So, yes, very, very pleased that it's out there. And very pleased, you know, there's almost... When a, when a transfer happens as well, especially when it's a Manchester United transfer, you all... This ain't a shock, is it? This ain't Fabinho being linked to Liverpool at 8 o'clock and signed at 9 o'clock. We never do that. We, we know this deal was going to happen. We've known that we've wanted Lissandro Martinez for about three weeks. So when United actually do get a deal close to completion... It's that relief that, yeah, I, I, I'm interested to see what his quotes are in his shirt, but don't take too long. Who's the next signing? And we, we definitely are in that mindset where, yeah, it's great. We've got Lissandra Martinez and I am really genuinely excited to see him play. But I'm like, now do the next one. Now do the next one. Hi, Mark. If you could guess when will we get here we go for Frankie, says Jerome. Oh, I'm glad somebody asked me about Frankie, actually. Um, and a few people have asked. Uh, Mark, we're going to do very well this I feel, I season. I feel it, says Kim. Uh, Raymond, welcome to the members. I'm not making any predictions on the new season yet. You know, I, I, I think it's very... I don't think I can... Well, I will make predictions because that's the whole point of having a community, but I'll do it before, just before the week of the season starts. But I think it's very difficult to predict what United are going to do next year. Seeing what they did last year, it's so hard to... I mean, they could be good, but they could... They might not be good, which is why I think bringing in three or four or five players is really important. Who's our captain now? Surely David De Gea, as it's always should have been for some awards. How was it ever in doubt, says Callum. <sighs> Frankie Dion. Um, there was a story from Sport tonight that I just couldn't get my head around. So Sport, I think, is a Barcelona outlet, if I remember right. I'm getting a bit tired now. And they basically said that... Words to the effect of Frankie de Jong, agent, has told Man United CEO to stop getting in contact to sign him because he's not going to join us. And I'm like, you know, the contradiction or different information that is out there in relation to Frankie de Jong, I don't, I've got no problem with any United fan being fed up of it because it's all over the place. It really is. We've been told that Frank... I mean, even Fabrizio said it today a couple of times. Um, De Jong does not want to come to Manchester United. and But then you've also got other journalists saying that De Jong's told United he does want to come to United. And I think it's just become so... I The sad thing about De Jong for me is that I read United fans now and they are... United fans I respect, there's people in the community, obviously I respect you guys and, and ladies as well, and there's people saying it, and they're going, I don't want this player anymore. I know he's a good player, but I don't want him anymore. This deal has just become so boringly toxic, I don't want him anymore. And I think that's such a shame, because neither do Barcelona. Nobody wants Frankie. And we've got to be the club that goes, come to this club, and you, we will. You, you'll realise... Um, what a great fan base we've got and how we support our players and people will go oh that's that's cheap you, you're always slagging off Maguire or Rashford or McTominay or Bruno well I'll slag any player off who's crap but I'll always support a player who puts a shift in for the shirt if you're not good enough you're not good enough you know I don't I don't go down the local fish and chip shop and when they when they give me a bag of um, bloody nails eat it and go that's great it's not chips and you know I think I, I can't think of a United player that we've bought and we haven't backed as a fan base. If he comes into the club and he's toxic and can't be asked and performs badly, then he'll be booted out and the fans won't want him. That's fine. But we will we will support him and we will because we do that with every player that comes in. And Frankie De Jong's a very good player and I think he'll be a good signing. I mean he might completely flop, I don't know. But I think it is sad how this deal has just been polluted by 
a very political situation at Barcelona, to be fair. You know, the financial situation has led them to be very political in the truth. And, you know, my, my, my feeling, I mean, look, I'm, I've just got out of bed to do this and I had this on in bed. But, um, you know, I am very confident that we'll sign Frankie de Jong. And, and the reason I'm very confident about that is because I speak to people and they tell me that Man United are very confident about this deal. They're very relaxed about this deal. And this deal is really being driven by Eric Ten Hag's relationship with Frankie de Jong and he speaks to him regularly. So all this publicity about Frankie de Jong adamantly not wanting to come to Manchester United and his agent telling United to stop asking him, I'm like, well, what's Frankie saying to Eric Ten Hag then? And why did, why did Barcelona ring us up to buy him in the first place? I think this deal will happen. I just think it's sad, as I said on the show at Seven, that it's got so toxic because... Um, there's no doubt, absolutely no doubt, that Frankie de Jong wants to stay at Barcelona. And I think we've always known that. And I think back in May, we knew that. And it's a personal choice for you to go, well, I don't want a player who needs to be persuaded to come to Manchester United or is a world-class player. Why would he want to come to United? Let's try and persuade him to come to United because if we get him, he's way better than anything that we can buy. And that's where I am. I know he doesn't want to come here. And I actually applaud him for that. I've said it before. I think there's something wrong with him if he went, oh, I'd love to come to United. We're crap. We're a crap football club run by people who don't know what they're doing. But we're trying to turn it into a really good football club that befits the fan base and the great name Manchester United. And we want him. The project is to help to be the, the focal point of getting us back there. And that's the persuasion. I think you've got to persuade these players to come to your club. I think we're way past the point where we go, I don't want a player if they don't want to come here. Have you seen what we are? Like we, you know, it's only because of Brighton we're in the Europa League. We should have been in the Conference League. So I've got no problem with persuading Dion, um, and I know full well why he wants to stay at Barcelona. Because why wouldn't he? But I don't think we're helped in the in this deal by the complete contrast of stories that come out every ten minutes. I think the truth is Barcelona want to sell him. I think the truth is that he was owed money by Barcelona. I think the truth is that we've upped the bid to give Barcelona some money to give to De Jong. And I think the truth is Barcelona now want to sell him and are getting pissed off with him not being sold and are basically saying, you're not going on the tour, we don't want you anymore, please go, in a polite way. And now the ball's in De Jong's court to just accept it. And what's the seven stages of grief? You know, maybe he's in denial at the moment. In a few hours, he might start to accept it. Just finished work. Any other news other than Martinez? Only asking because I haven't had time all week to catch up. Keep up the great content, says Dylan. Well, I've just given a big update on Frenkie. Um James, welcome to the Members Club. The Frankie de Jong saga has been more fatiguing because of the spurious stories that have been spun out of Barcelona, says Michaelvis. Yeah, there's a lot of... And the trouble is, it's you're not wrong to say that these stories are, are bullshit because some of them completely contrast and contradict each other. Kia says, Frankie's been held hostage by his own wages. Barca's treatment of him is shameful. I could see Martinez players CDM tucking in with Varane and Maguire when defending while fullbacks push up, says Carlas. Maybe, but I, I tell you what... We're buying him as a left-sided centre-back. That's the plan. Maybe he will become a midfielder if we, if, we, if if the midfield's crap, but we're not buying him for that, I don't think. Um, you can pay you can't pay attention to sport. They spelled Eric Ten Hag as Ten Hag. Uh, ignore and waste your, wear your T-shirt with pride, says Sakin. Mark, you're a legend. Five shows in one day. Get some rest, pal. Hopefully Frankie de Jong tomorrow, says Adam. I've had done five shows today. It's been a very long day. Uh, why are we trying to send it, sign him when he's not interested? I would sign Tillemans and Ndidi. Well... Silliman's and Ndidi are completely different players to Frankie de Jong. The reason we're signing Frankie de Jong is because he's one of the best ball-carrying midfielders in the world. He's a very creative player and um, his passing range is fantastic. And this is why Frankie de Jong wants him. Because basically, he's probably looked at that McFred midfield like we have and said they can't get the ball off the back four and feed the attack. Frankie de Jong can. My dad thinks signing de Jong is bad for us because Barca win me games without him and he can't get in the team over Pedri and Xavi, says the gaming panda. I, I sort of respect that from your dad, in a sense, because let me just disappear for a minute. I'm not disappearing in audio. Sam, welcome to the Members Club. I, I sort of respect that, in a sense, from your dad because, you know, maybe he doesn't get in the team sometimes because of other players at Barcelona. But... James Ward-Prowse would be an improvement on our midfield. And that's what I would say to your dad. Who are you going to get 
to come to Manchester United in the Europa League who is better than Frankie de Jong. And that's the statement, isn't it? L move past this moral pride of not wanting players that don't want to come here because I understand why he doesn't want to come here. You've got to try and persuade a player that that's that, that good to come to United. Who is available that is better than Frankie de Jong that suits the way that Ten Hag wants to play? He created Frankie de Jong. He sold him to Barcelona from Ajax. I'm absolutely behind Ten Hag on why he wants Frankie de Jong. It's a player. He knows, it's the same reason he wants Lissandra Martinez. He's got to try and get this United side playing well ASAP. What better way to get the team playing the way he wants to play than bring in players that he knows um, want to come? And, you know... I think we'll get this deal over the line because I think it's a club statement as well. If the club don't get De Jong, they've publicly embarrassed themselves and shown that they're no better than Woodward and Judge at getting players in for their manager. If they do get Ten Hag De Jong, people will say, God, it was a long deal. Bloody hell. How, why did it take so long? But they'll also say, well done. Well done for getting that deal done. Abbas says, hi, I have a question. Do you think what's other choices if we couldn't buy De Jong? And what do you think about uh, Neves from Wolves? Thank you, says Abbas. Thank you, Abbas. Um, oh, I think Ruben Neves is a good player. And I think Tillemans is a good player. But I don't think that they are options. I mean, Ruben Neves would probably cost around the same price as De Jong. Wolves want a lot of money for him. Um, but Ruben Neves and Tillemans are nowhere near, nowhere near the, the uh, ability of um, Frankie Dion. So, you know, that's that's what I think about that right there. I really don't see how Eric Ten Hag will play a right footer at centre-back. He just never did it at Ajax. Maybe Tellez back up left centre-back, love from Texas, says Robert. Look, we're buying, we're buying Martinez. That's what this video has been about. We're nearly at 5,000 likes. Please smash a like. I'm just about to gift, actually, uh, as a thank you. Uh, 10 memberships and if you are a member and you're going to be a new member then make sure you check out the video comparing Lissandro Martinez to Maguire because you'll really enjoy that it's only a 5-10 minute video and it's never been more relevant so do check that out um, they should be into the chat now but we are buying him as a left-sided centre-back if, if he becomes a midfielder in the future I can't say that won't happen but we're buying him as a left-sided centre-back because if you know anything about Ten Hag and the way he plays football he 100% wants a left-footed left-back and a left-footed left-centre-back and a right-footed right-centre-back and a right-footed right-back he wants that balance in the defence why does he want it? why didn't we do it under Solskjaer? why did Solskjaer play a right-footed um, Maguire is a left-sided centre-back. Why does Southgate do it? Because Southgate don't play the way Ajax did. And Solskjaer certainly doesn't. You can play with a right-sided, uh, right-footed right centre-back in the way that Solskjaer played or the way that Southgate plays. But if you want your left-sided centre-back to cover the flank when your left-back goes forward, you need a left-footer. You need balance. And that is why we're bringing Lissandro Martinez in. The interesting counterpoint to that is, why did he want Timber, who's right-footed? Um... I think he was still going to play Timber as a left footed centre as a as a right right footer at left centre back. But we'll never know. Frankie Dion is a class act, but rather have Martinez at centre back. I think Lindelof could do a job as a CDM. Freddie Frankie Dion doesn't want to come, says Andy. Uh I nearly said thanks to United Stand for gifting 10 year United Stand memberships, but that's me. And United fans should have high standards, but also understand the current state of the club. Frankie Dion will be a great signing, and Eric Tang knows he will do Eric Tang knows he will do a job, says Scott. Going to the game tonight and have my Glazers out t-shirts, says Chris. Of course, for some of you getting up this morning, welcome. Welcome to the world. Um, if you are in Australia or uh, on that side of the world, it's tonight for you. I've still got to go to bed. And then when I get up in the morning, it's um, 11 o'clock in the morning kickoff for us. Philippe Anderson may be a possible second choice to Anthony if budget's right. Uh, you can't take him, Mason. He, he bloody West Ham rejects. I mean, I liked him at Lazio, but I don't think he's somebody I would take at Manchester United now. We need to try and buy the best. That's what we need to do. Mark, would you take someone like Modric as a stopgap as the much-needed second CM, says Sam? Well, first of all, Sam, no. And second of all, Real Madrid wouldn't sell him. This makes no sense at all. Let's think about this. Frankie Dion can pursue the wages he's owed even after he leaves Barca. What's really the hold-up here, Mark, says SK. I'll tell you what the real hold-up here is. Barcelona telling Dion that they don't want him on the tour and he's sold. 
I think Frankie de Jong has hung about in case all these financial levers that Barcelona have pulled will make them go, we don't need to sell you anymore. I think that's the truth. I think Frankie de Jong is hanging around hoping that Barcelona go, we don't need to sell you. Because ultimately, they're not selling him because he's a bad player. They're selling him because he brings money in. I'll say it once and I'll say it again. This feels different with Eric Ten Hag, says Nav. And I have as much faith in Ten Hag as Mark does in wash and go. And I'm going to the game. There you go. I hope next season will be entertaining to watch, says Tom. Well, we'll see what Brit tomorrow brings. Um, I'm sure you're going to wake up to slow sports news of deal done. But fair play to Laurie. Fair play to um, me for saying it as well a few hours ago. I couldn't understand why people weren't saying it. And uh, a few other people as well. Frankie de Jong is a statement signing. We shouldn't even be in for him, says Leo. Uh, well, remember, we're talking about Martinez. Will we sign? Will we signing anyone after de Jong and Martinez, says Abbas? I hope so. We'll have to wait and see. But thanks, everyone, who smashed the like. We've got 5,000 on the video for uh, Lissandra Martinez. I'm excited by this signing. And um, let's get him to Manchester, get the medical done, and get him on that plane. That's the big thing. I don't care if he's holding up the shirt on Saturday morning, but get him on a plane on Saturday evening out to Australia, training with the lads, ready for the start of the season. Let's get to go. Right, I'm off to bed. Big up, Mark, says EJ. Well, nah, big up to you lot. You know, we've, we've had 20,000 people watching at midnight. This community is amazing. Positive vibes. We just want the best. We just want Manchester United to be good. I don't think these players realise it. They've become so brandified. They think when they get criticised, oh, I don't like them, I don't like them. You're meant to be a team, lads. It's not, it's not Bruno FC. It's not Martial FC. It's not Rashford FC. It's Manchester United FC. You're a team. We criticise you because we, we don't feel you play as a team. We don't believe that you play to the standards required. Get the team ethic. Play well. Get the reward. We're all in it together. Get the positive vibes going. I believe now deal done because of the gift, says Mohammed. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll speak to you in the morning. It's a watch along tomorrow. Don't forget that. We'll be live from 10. Take care.